because the way that patterns repeat themselves is often in unexpected ways, in the sense that, look, I'm describing that actually all of your experience is God. All of it is you. So your patterns are going to come out through your behavior, through your speech, through what you encounter within your environment, your interactions with other people. So if you can, you're not just going to find a pattern one place, in other words. If, you, if there's a pattern that exists, it exists on multiple levels. For example, the, this is not quite accurate, but if we get down to the atomic structure, this, the atomic structure of atoms, we can say, well, they're kind of like little solar systems. Kind of like little solar systems. That's, that's a somewhat inaccurate picture at this point in time based on what we know of quantum physics, but we can kind of say that. So here at the very small level, we seem to have a centralized energy core, and then we have units of energy that seem to circle around that central core. And then well, when we look at the solar system, we have the centralized energy core of the sun, and then we have these energy units of planets that are circling around. So we see patterns repeat themselves across multiple levels. But what's important about fractals is that one of the amazing discoveries of fractals is that suddenly, here's a way to mathematically map everything that exists in nature, which is extraordinary. So here we're in a room made out of a bunch of man-made objects. So we're, we're just dealing with really simple geometry in this room. But if you look out at the tree that's out there, that's a fractal. Right there. Every plant you can see is a fractal. And if you look at the mountain line, the ridge of the mountain line, that can be described mathematically as a fractal. You can take any cloud in the sky there is a mathematical function that explains that cloud. It is a fractal. It explains it or describes it? Well, you can map it out. And so you can actually, if you get the numbers right, you can reproduce that exact image in three dimensions in your computer. So for example, you know, if you're out in space and you're looking down at the Earth and you see a river, and you get closer to that river, you will see that the tributaries that flow into that river tend to follow the same patterns as the main river. And then you zoom in any closer, and you see that the streams that flow into the tributaries tend to follow the same patterns as the tributary that follows the same pattern as the main river. And then you get down to little tiny rivulets in the sand right at the edge of the tributary, and you see the same patterns. So we have patterns at a very small scale up to a very large scale, and it's a repetition of variations on a theme. Variations on a Mirrors are a circulatory system. Yes, our circulatory system is also a fractal. In terms of our veins and our bodies, it is a fractal. You can actually mathematically compute how your veins are going through your body based on fractal mathematics. So this is really peculiar, that it seems like pretty much all of the energetic structures that exist within nature, both inorganic mountains and clouds, and lakes and coastlines and things like that, inorganic matter, and organic living beings are mathematically described by fractals. Now, where else do we see variations on a theme? Well, let's <coughs> look around the room. <laughs> variations on a theme. How many people here have got two hands? Raise your hands. Sweet. How many people here have got two feet? Right? <laughs> Three feet, all right, now we're moving. And you know what? If you look around at kind of a lot of the mobile animals that move around on this beautiful planet, variations on a theme. Two arms, two legs, tail. Oh, well, we kind of lost ours, but you know, we used to have one. Two eyes, two nostrils. Same physical principles. There's an economy.